On January 27, 1973, the Paris Peace Accords were signed, bringing an official end to the Vietnam War. One of the requirements of this treaty was that all U.S. prisoners be returned home. When these men arrived back to their homes, they brought with them stories of horrendous conditions and terrible torture. Over the course of the conflict, nearly 800 Americans were captured by the North Vietnamese. While in captivity, they were psychologically tortured, used as propaganda, and used as tools in negotiation. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest, weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be considered offensive or disturbing, viewer discretion is advised. Why are we so fascinated by these pals? Though the official dates of the Vietnam War are commonly shown as 1964 to 1973, American soldiers are recorded as being captured as early as 1954. Of the nearly 800 men captured in North Vietnam, 687 were returned alive. The rest are presumed to have died in captivity. However, even though many American officials went on record to deny it, many American citizens believed that there were still hundreds, if not thousands of American men, still being held captive after the end of the war. This was such a popular belief that in 1991, Congress conducted an investigation into the matter and found no evidence that showed this. Still though, the rumor remains even today, and is a recommended Google search. So why is it that the prisoners in Vietnam got so much attention? After all, every war in history has had prisoners of war. Part of the answer may be that this was the first war that America did not win, meaning that they could not go in and search for more prisoners. They had to take the word of the Vietnamese. This stronger sense of concern is also, at least partially, because this war was so much more publicized than any that came before it. Americans could watch footage on their televisions of military operations. This brought a stronger feeling of connection to the men fighting. There also was much stronger public resistance to this war. Many American people loudly did not support it, and so were more concerned with the soldiers that were across the world fighting. Most likely though, the truly awful things that POWs had to endure is what led many Americans to question if all their captured soldiers had been returned home. The North Vietnamese spent the entire war lying about the conditions the soldiers were kept in, making it seem like the prisons were clean and that the POWs were fed well. They would have Americans read statements about their kindness and good living conditions. They even went so far as to bring journalists in to see and report on the well-maintained prisons. Why would they start being honest about the prisoners now that the war was over? It was during one of these propaganda statements in 1966 that a prisoner named Jeremiah Denton Jr. blinked the word torture in Morse code. This confirmed what many Americans already believed, that these prisons were not what they appeared. Who were the prisoners? When it came to who was captured, most of the POWs were pilots that were captured after their planes were shot down. This made a big difference in previous wars. In the past, most prisoners were enlisted men, but pilots were all officers. There were some enlisted men captured in other ways, and even some civilians were imprisoned. The POWs were kept in a variety of prisons and camps throughout both North and South Vietnam, and even some in surrounding countries. The biggest and most famous of these prisons was Ho Lo Prison, aka the Hanoi Hilton. It was located in central Hanoi and was the hub of the prison network. Most captured men started here, and eventually, all POWs were moved here. Torture against the American prisoners began pretty much as soon as they were captured, however, it became much more severe than it had been in late 1965, just a few months after the U.S. fully entered the war. One of the most common forms of mental torture that prisoners experienced was long periods of solitary confinement. Some men who were particularly defiant to the Vietnamese were held in solitary for years at a time. Even when not in full solitary, the prisoners were rarely allowed to communicate with one another, keeping sane while imprisoned. This led to soldiers creating a TAP code. It's credited as being implemented in June of 1965 by four prisoners at the Ho'olo prison. It was a code that one of them was taught by a survival instructor. He taught it to the other three men, and from there it became widely used in all the prisons. It was simple to learn, even when they could not speak and it let them communicate in secret. They used it right in front of their captors by tapping on their bodies, but could also use it while separated by tapping on the walls. The tap code was not their only means of communication. Hand signals, secret and coded notes in common areas, rudimentary sign language, 
and speaking with guards were all used to get messages to one another. There was a network of getting messages to other parts of the camp, to other camps, and even to Washington, D.C. This communication is credited as helping to both keep military order when the Vietnamese were trying so hard to destroy it and to keep morale up amongst the prisoners. It helped to keep the prisoners sane through the long days, months, and years of solitary and secluded confinement. Prison Conditions Pr Prisoners were moved from camp to camp frequently. This was to create a lack of familiarity and stability, though it did allow for the communication methods to spread. The other main reason to constantly move prisoners was to keep them away from American forces. If they were nearby, all prisoners would be cleared out and sent somewhere else to eliminate the chances of rescue. Sometimes, especially in South Vietnam, they would be forced to build a new camp. Torture in South Vietnam Prisoners held in the South had a higher chance of dying than those in the North. Southern prisons were typically located in swamps or forests and were open to the elements. This means that malaria ran rampant. Also common were fungal infections. When they thought it couldn't get any worse, the monsoon season brought mud and dysentery. They were often kept in cages that were too small to even stand in. It was also common to keep the POWs completely separated from other Americans. Another common torture in the South was to shackle prisoners in their huts and force them to lie in their own urine and feces for days at a time. When this happened, it was normal to take their mosquito nets away, which increased the prisoners' chances of getting malaria. Beatings, cuts in food rations, and lack of sunlight were all used to try to break the prisoners. Torture in North Vietnam If death was more likely in the South, creative physical and mental tortures were more common in the North. These were specifically designed to break the prisoners' will. On top of the regular beatings, leak deprivation, and poor food rations, were a host of awful treatments that just start with waterboarding. Torture cuffs were a special kind of wrist binding. These were steel handcuffs or manacles that were locked by a key wrench. They would be ratcheted smaller and smaller, usually down to the bone. This would cause instant pain and cut off blood flow to the hands. The prisoners would be forced to wear these all day with very few breaks to eat and clean their latrine buckets. Like we mentioned before, it was normal to keep prisoners in complete isolation often in darkened cells with little air movement and nothing in the room except for a waste bucket. And that was not guaranteed. Sometimes during this, the prisoners' hands or feet would be shackled, potentially with the torture cuffs. There is one noted instance at the Briarpatch prison where prisoners were forced to remain in deep holes in the ground for an entire month with their hands cuffed behind their backs. The worst, though, was Strapato, which the prisoners nicknamed the ropes. During this, a prisoner's ankles were tied together and hands cuffed behind his back. His arms were then tied so that they touched from the elbows down and cut the circulation off. Then, a rope would be connected from his wrists to an elevated hook or ceiling beam and the prisoner would be raised off the floor. The Latter Years This treatment of prisoners lasted from the start of the conflict until the very end. It did, however, slow in the late 1970. There are several things that caused this. First, on November 1970, American forces landed within 25 miles of Hanoi and assaulted the Sun Tay prisoner camp. While they did not find any prisoners there like they expected, this scared the Vietnamese. Yes, it was a huge intelligence failure on the Americans' part, but it resulted in the Vietnamese moving all of their prisoners into Hanoi, many to the Hanoi Hilton. With there being so many more prisoners in one spot, it was harder for them to enforce isolation. Around the same time, three POWs were released by the North Vietnamese, these prisoners spoke openly about their torture and mistreatment. The Vietnamese felt the world's opinion turning against them further. Not long before this, North Vietnam's leader, Ho Chi Minh died. It is widely speculated that he was the driving force behind issuing the intense torture. Of course, the mistreatment did not stop after these things happened, but it did slow down. Finally, on January 1973, the Paris Peace Accords were signed, and the war in Vietnam was over. A large part of this was allowing all captured prisoners to return home. Before their release, the prisoners were given three meals a day of better quality food, as opposed to the two meals of questionable food they had been getting. This was to try to help them to regain all the weight they lost while imprisoned. They were also allowed more time in the sun to darken their skin to more natural color. Of course, no one was fooled by this, and many of the former prisoners spoke publicly about their time in prison. 
Some went on to write books about their experiences, and a few even went on to be leaders in America. The most notable of these is the late Senator John McCain. It's hard to imagine what these prisoners went through. How do you think they managed to make it through the years of torture that they went through? If you like this video, like and subscribe for more. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video.